Shalom, Shalom, call me Asha Allah. I give this video to the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. And I want you to listen to this video 10 times. No, stop. I want you to listen to this video every day until this message is embedded into your subconscious mind. Because only then will you start to act it out. And guess what? This message is really going to change your life. It's not coincidental that you clicked on to my channel within this moment to hear this message. This is divine intervention of God, Yahweh. He wanted you to hear this message because this message is what's needed to change your life. I am the messenger that he's actually raised up to send to you and to many other in the world that will receive this message because this message is not from Tazadah it's from Yahweh God Almighty I'm just a vessel that the spirit is speaking through I'm just that vessel so hear this message and I'm going to store it off. I'm going to store it off. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to store it off by telling you something that happened in my life. See, there was a person that was down and out. They was being abused. They was around someone that was a molester. And I asked them, wow, what, what, can you explain to me how was you able to maintain and remain around a person as such if your spirit was right. So immediately the spirit told me there's something wrong with this person's spirit to be around someone that will molest a younger person. See, that kind of person has demons whispering in their ear. And the person that I try to help through the spirit of the Howard Bosch and the Howard Shah had to have demons on them and I knew it I could see it and each time I would try and tell them they would do deny it they would deny it they always talking about how oh yeah God talks to me and I try to get them to see yeah you're being talked to but that's not the spirit of the Lord you got demons on you you're very rebellious Look at the company that you keep. You hang around rebellious people. The Heavenly Father orders us not to do that. James 4 verse 4 says, Friendship with the world is enmity with Yahweh. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Come ye out from amongst them and be ye separate. So if you have friends smoking marijuana, this drinking, this dressing like whores, this playing the whoremonger, that's, you know, playing a whore sleeping with this man, that man, or he's sleeping with this woman, that woman, no, no responsibility, no commitment, then you're just like them. Because two things cannot occupy the same space at once. Righteousness cannot occupy the same space as wickedness. One will overcome the other. Yahweh Shah said it like this. If you're lukewarm, you're going to be spurred out of the mouth. So I try to talk to this person. I try to show them love. I try to take them under my wing. And they would say, oh yeah, yeah, Makahan, Makahan. Um, you're my kahan, you're my teacher. But the problem with that is they didn't listen to their teacher. They were not open to instructions. They were rebellious. And 1 Samuel 15 and 23 says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. So, I mean, that's, what, that's a rebellious person. They're like a sorcerer. They're all right. As long as you're talking about someone else. But when you point out their wrongs, they can't handle it. That's how that's how you could actually determine an unclean person. So when I started to tell them, hey, you need to do this. And, you, and when you love someone, the scriptures say the father chastised those whom he loved. 
And if you don't follow chastisement in the book of Hebrews 12 chapter, then you're bastards and not sons. And daughters is just speaking in a masculine form right there. But if you don't follow chastisement, then you're bastards and not sons or daughters. So, but if you hate rebuke, the scripture says a wise man loves rebuke, but the wicked will hate you for it. So that means you're wicked. I didn't say it. I'm just quoting what the book says. So this person was always talking about, oh yeah, I know God talked to me. And I say, it's a demon talking to you. You got demons whispering in your ear, whispering bad things. So they made a really bad, they make like spontaneous bad decision. Now you know it's in their spirit. I don't have to tell you family. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Damn sure it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. You know what their spirit was calling them to. The demons was whispering to this portion to go back around the child molesting. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You ever see what happens when a dog vomits? They go and eat it back up. So that's what it is when you have demons whispering to your head. You go back to that same lifestyle. You want to resist it, but you can't. Because you never truly replace those unclean spirits with the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And you can only do that with fasting and prayer. You can't go around wicked people and say that you're righteous. You're only lying to yourself. And when the Most High sent in judgment on many of you, 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 you don't realize what's going on because you're not walking in the spirit. You're carnal as hell. You understand everything from a carnal level and you have a debtor's mindset. You just want to argue. I try to give you indignation, righteous rebuke, righteous anger, anger but you want to argue. You want to go in a debtor mode. So the only thing I can do is present scriptures to you and cut you with the scriptures and let you take that vibration. And then you're in the valley of decision, whether you're gonna do wrong or you're gonna do right. So the spirit told me to walk away from this person. And when I walked away from this person, they sent the real nasty grand. Oh, you're not this, you're not a man of God. You're just like the average man. See, that's the spirit of sin. I'm gonna hit you with something, family. When people see that you're different, and you can look at Taz and Doc, well, you're in the cell of my voice right now. You know I'm not average. In fact, I am allergic to being average. I am allergic to mediocrity. I'm allergic to average. That's one thing I'm damn not. It's average. I'm extraordinary. I'm not no ordinary Hebrew Israelite. I'm not no ordinary man. When people come into my life, there's something about me, my spirit, that provokes you to want to change. And because I'm such a nice guy, because I give you love, because I help you when I don't have to. I might help you when I don't have to. I might help you with your phone bill, and you might say, why did he do that? I might feed you, and you might say, why did he do that? because I'm giving you love. I'm trying to show you the love of God, but many of you can't receive it, why? Because you got Satan whispering in your head. So, you use deceptive intelligence to justify and rationalize your wrongdoing. So the demons in your mind make evil fear seeming. And make it seem is what you're doing is right. These are unclean spirits. These are demonic spirits. And such could actually only be taken out by fasting and prayer. And if you go around unclean people, and most of the people in this world, they're not walking in the spirit of truth, then you're unclean. See, this is not an easy walk. This truth is not for everyone. You see some people going, they put on righteous garments, they put on the fringes. But if you check out what's going on, on the other side of their lives, they're wicked as hell. Yet they think they're gonna get a, in the kingdom. And let me tell you something, sisters. 
the most high, I'm going to show you, watch this, watch this. This is going to prevent a lot of women from going into the kingdom, from making it. You are actually given an order from the beginning in Genesis to submit to your husband. It tells you that the man was not made for woman, but the woman was created for man. And your desire shall be unto your husband, and he shall rule over you. Many women got a problem with that. Why? Because of feminism and because Satan is whispering you in your ear. So don't think that you could ever follow Yahweh. I don't care what you think. We don't go by what you think. It's thus saith the Lord. It isn't written. Show me anywhere in the scriptures where you're justified and disrespecting your husband. You can't do it. It's not there. Any of you can't do it. It's not there. It tells you to honor your husband as the Lord. Do you know what a big tax that is? And do you realize how many women are not doing that? So do you realize how many women are not going to get the kingdom? See, I'm not going to talk to you how they talk to you in church. I'll give you some feel good um, scriptures. I'm going to give you the truth. And it's going to cut you. So right now, if a Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, would return today, most of you sisters would not make it because you do not honor that precept. And you damn sure do not honor your husband. You sleep around. You know the precept, Romans 7 and 2. You can't take another man until your husband dies. And then again in 1 Corinthians 7 and 39, you can't take another man unless your husband is dead. So why are so many women calling themselves Israelites, calling themselves Christians, and they get a divorce, and then they go and spread their quiver to another man? It's because you are a hoe. I don't care if it hurts. I'm going to tell you, this is the Bible. This is the real Bible that most women cannot tolerate and don't want to hear. Because what? Most women are not right. It was not Adam that sinned in the garden. It was Eve. And she enticed her husband to sin. So it was the woman that was actually in transgression. As it says in the book of 1 Timothy 2, verse 13. Going down to 14. Though the woman being in transgression, she said. So I'm telling all of you sisters, in the sound of my voice, get your minds right. I want to talk to you, King. Old King. Young King. Hear me out, Lord. Hear me out. Hear me out. I want to talk to you, Queen. Young princess, hear this message. Share this message. There's someone, if you don't need this message, there's someone in your life that needs this message. There's someone that you know that needs this message. So share the message. Spread the knowledge. Share this message. The question is, are you running the day or is the day running you? That's the question. Because if the day is running you, then you're not winning in life. Be why? Because of excuses. You love freaking excuses. Oh, I'm going to do this later uh, later in life. Uh, I'm going to do this a little later. I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this a few weeks from now. You know what? Later in life, a few weeks from now, is turning around and looking in the freaking mirror and doing it right now. And so, if you turn around and look in the mirror right now, if there's no progression, that's how it's going to be later in life. You're not going to be progressing. You're going to be stagnating. You're going to be where you are right now. That's later in life. Later in life, you're going to be trying the blues and still talking about what you could have done, what you should have done, but you're not. And you're going to hate yourself for it. So do it now. No time like the present. You better use that aphorism. 
There's no time like the present. So you better do it now. Take charge of your life now. You should be running the day. The day should not be running you. So I was talking to my man, Sean. Sean Watkins. Man with seven felonies. Came from the bottom. How did he do it? He didn't listen to the a negative voice. He listened to Taz and Doc saying, listen, man, you can do it. You can overcome all of this. And so my man was telling me, yeah, Taz and Doc, man, because of you, I bought me some land, and now I put solar, solar panels on my RV. And um, actually, I got a well on my land. And so I told him, that's good, that's good, that's good, kid. It's real good. But the most valuable piece of real estate that you can have is your body, is your mind. Why? Because you can't foreclose on this. You're stuck with it for a lifetime. You can't do a quick claim on your body. You're stuck with it. And no investment. Why are you not investing into your body? Right, you would invest on that piece of real estate that you live in, call your home, but they can foreclose you. Stop making payments. They'll foreclose you. Don't pay property taxes. They will take it from you. <clears throat> but the body that you have, that your spirit resides in, is the most valuable piece of real estate that you could ever have. So you need to do an about face. Go back and work out to the fullest until you feel the pain of pushing your body beyond the capacity of what you thought that you could do. Because the pain that you feel in the gym is temporary to the pride that you will feel for a lifetime if you train your body beyond your fixed limitations and then nourish it with good food. So essentially, you got one freaking house to live in. That's your body. So what kind of house do you want to live in? And you're fat, but you go right on neglecting your body. So you can live in a mansion, or you can continue to live on the streets of reality and let your body be sluggish, fat, sloppy. It's the same thing with other, any other endeavor in life. It could be a marriage, it could be a job, it could be an entrepreneur. You gotta put in that sweat equity. You gotta burn the midnight oil. Now let me ask you a question, King. Young King, Queen, Young Queen. Why are you watching this video right now? Taza Doc didn't seek you out and find you. You found Taza Doc. Why? Because there's something in your life that's insufficient, that's deficient, that's lacking that you want to change. So you found Tazadot to inspire that change in you. So there's something about your life that you want to change. The course of action that you previously been taking, you no longer want to travel down that path. You've hit the wall too many times and now you've decided, I gotta change this. I want to be better than this. To keep telling you to invest into today, not into tomorrow. You sacrifice today for tomorrow's betterment. But when you put too much focus into the pain that you're going through right now, when you put too much focus into the struggle that you're going through right now, then you lose focus. You lose the vision of the big picture. You gotta sacrifice right now, 
today, within this minute, for tomorrow's betterment. But if you don't have the determination, if you're not driven, then you don't know what that betterment is. See, the reality is, is very few people are willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, the devotion, the spirit of being driven by what it requires to be successful. And this is why Tazadak has so many haters, because on that road, you're going to see a lot of dead corpses, skeletons of all of those that try what Tazadak is doing, and they fell. So they become bitter at me. Being an effective creditor, being a secure party creditor like Tazadak, is not one in the courtroom. It's not accomplished in the courtrooms. It's accomplished you stand up into the wee hours in the morning, burning the midnight oil, studying, researching, looking through this book, looking through that book, cross-referencing everything. That's how it's accomplished. That's how you effectively become a secure party creditor and a contract law expert. That is how it's accomplished talking about, I mean, this person they're talking about, I'm this, they're that, yeah, God talks to me, I know you don't believe it, demons are talking to you, you know what you are, since you don't know what you are, let me tell you what you are, you are what you do repeatedly every day, what you do repeatedly every day, that's who you really are, it's not what you say from your mouth, it's not what you say, it's what you do. I share that with you all of the time. It's not what you say, it's what you do. No matter what you've conjured up into your mind, that's not fucking you. You're the loser. You're the traitor. You're the betrayer that backbites and then falsely charges others with that. Because that's who you really are. And you fucking hate yourself. See, you hate on times of doubt. You hate me. Because... I reflect down as a reminder of what you should be and what you wish you were. You wish you had the influence on others' lives that Tazadak has and that you were such a nice person like I am. And because I'm such a nice person, you hate me for it. And you hate yourself because you hate me because I'm truly genuinely a nice person and you can't handle that you can't handle the truth so you keep selling yourself lie at the lie at the lie at the lie to make yourself feel better because you cannot tolerate reality so you live in a damn imaginary bubble within your mind so the only way to come out of that is you're going to have to turn around and look your fucking self in the mirror and say, I'm fucked up and I really need to change because I'm ruining my life. Not no one else. You're ruining your life. You're the reason why you're like you are right now. You're the reason that maybe your children are out of your life. Maybe you're not with the person that you could have been with because your loud mouth screwed it up. You're the reason. But you keep telling yourself for that feel good uh, experience that you love, you keep telling yourself the lie that it's someone else to make yourself feel better. But it's really you that's messed up. And until you change you, your life is never gonna change. It's never gonna change. You'll be okay for a second. You go and get a temporary fix. You jump from person to person to person to person. When are you going to stop and examine yourself and diminish that Satan of self? Because see, that's the real problem. And in order to overcome that Satan of self, there has to occur an internal battle between you 
and your lower self. And it tell you, and to go this battle, you're always going to be where you are right now. So the question that you have to ask yourself, am I willing to turn around in the mirror and deal with this monster that I am right now? You gotta replace your lion mentality with honesty and, 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 and honor and kindness. You gotta learn to be kind to people. You gotta stop allowing it be all about you. You. It's what you want. You're in it for you. See, these are the leeches in life. There's some people that make investments in others, not to make others better, but to see what they can get from others. Those are the leeches in life. They draw on to you like a damn bloodthirsty leech and they suck everything out of you that they can. And if they can, they would suck dear life out of you if they could. So you gotta watch out for these leeches that comes in sheep's clothing, that comes under the disguise of fake love, that comes under the disguise, oh yeah, 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 you're, you're, you're my car, you're my cover. But you gotta watch and see if what they're saying coincides with what they're doing. And if what they're saying does not coincide with what they're doing, there's not good verb and subject agreement. And it's all lies. So I'm telling you, family, watch out for these type of people. Stay clear of them because they will suck the life out of you and suck the life out of you. Deprive you of your success, or you could really start seeing them for what they are. Forget about what they're telling you that they are, because in essence, you are what you repeatedly do every day. So make sacrifices and invest into this time, into this moment. That's the recipe. I'm tired of doc. That's the recipe of champions. I invest into the now. I invest into things that will actually make a change in my life. Do you understand? See, I don't even know that if you've actually ever determined a stage in your life that you're gonna stop making excuses and blaming other people for the reasons that you're fucked up, that you're messed up. Then you'll stop doing that. You ever plan to stop doing that? You just keep running from person to person and blaming everybody else. Everybody else is wrong, except for you. But I'm gonna tell you something, family. If you want to avoid these critics that come and put Taz and Doc down, oh yeah, well, you're just like every other man that I know. You're no different. You yell at me. Well, I'm chastising you to make you better. But you don't get it. Why? Because there's something inside of you that cannot tolerate the truth, and therefore you do not change. So, if you don't want to deal with these critics, you want to avoid these critics, just sit around and do nothing. Because they don't talk about people that's doing nothing. The reason that you're telling me, oh yeah, well you're just like every other man, you're just like everyone else, is because you're fucked up. It's because the lie in me reflects down as a reminder that you could have been where I am and where I am actually still showing 
it too. But you're not. So if you don't want critics in your life, just sit around and do nothing. But it's funny how you know about me. I didn't know about you. It's funny how you know about me. I didn't know who the fuck you were until you came into my life. Until you came around me. And you tell, say, Tazada, hey, help me with this. I didn't know who you were. But you and so many others know Tazada because a heavenly father has raised me up to a status, a priesthood, and you can't handle that. I'm not like every, everyone else. I'm not like anyone else. I'm unique in my own way. And so, if you guys want to avoid these critics, just say nothing, do nothing. And they won't bother you because you're not making a difference like them. They go around complaining to put people down and criticizing people and try to bring them down there to their level because they're the weeds in life. They, they run wild, they do wild things. They're not the flowers, they're the, they're the weeds that want to contaminate your garden. Don't allow it. But if you make a difference, because of my greatness, because I had mesmerizing effect on others and influence them to do better. These critics, they hate me, they're jealous of me, they're envious of me. And they are freaking losers. They hate themselves because it's a reminder. My greatness, my success, my perseverance, my devotion to my craft, my devotion to the most high makes them hate me. Because I reflect down as a reminder of how they should be and what they could be, but they're really not. But they hate themselves because it, because I'm a nice guy. See, success and my magnificent abilities makes you envious of me. Well, thank you for acknowledging the fact that I'm doing something because I didn't know who the fuck you were before you contact me, but you seem to know who I was, and that should tell you something. And while you're talking it, I'm walking it, and I'm living it. Are you talking about you miss me? You miss me? After you trying to demoralize me? insult me but you miss me get your mind right because you're operating on a lower level of vibration and because you realize that your life is messed up so you try your best you try your darnest to make me and others feel like you are but I'm too strong so you gotta check yourself Check yourself, check yourself. You insult others to make yourself feel better because you don't have inside what it takes to make yourself better. So you sit down and you jaw jap, jaw jap, jaw jap, jaw jap to this person, this one, I'll tell you about this, tell you about that. And then when you go to these people, they say, hey, Dig ties it down. The brother helped me out. Yeah, he helped me out. See, the only one that's gonna talk bad about Ties the Dot is the critics, is the losers that could not extract from me what they wanted. So they get ill on Ties Dot, he's just an average man. That's what you say. I'm not average. You see, the average motherfucker, they don't make it through the struggle. They don't make it through the struggle. The average person is sitting around, working in a damn cubicle, nine to five, wondering how they're gonna pay off this student loan and live the life that they desire that can't have. See, I can work for anywhere I want. I can go anywhere I want on the planet. See what I'm saying? All I need is a computer and a cell phone. I can work from anywhere I want to work. I don't have a boss. My boss is Yahawa. Bahasham Yahawashah. Ain't nobody tell me what to do. I'll be here at this time. 
the most highs of my boards. That feels, damn, that feels good too, man. Come and go as I please. And because of that, you hate me for that. You hate my lifestyle. It's because of choices that you made. You know what you say? To make yourself feel better? I had a couple bad breaks in life. Got some bad breaks in life. Damn. I could have done this, I could have done that. No, you made fucked up choices. It's because of what you're doing right now is where you're in the predicament that you're in right now. So I'm telling you to stop it. Stop it now. And you still got time to change. Your life is not over. But you gotta repent. I don't mean to seem vulgar, but I'm speaking from passion. And when I speak, that's how I talk. That's how I talk. And so by the time you look up, your window of opportunities is beginning to close. And you say, fuck, damn, I had some bad breaks. Then you look over at Tyler Dollar. You see one month, he's in Orlando, Florida. Then you see him, he's in Atlanta, Georgia. Then you see him, he's in Las Vegas. He's in California. And he got a big ass smile on his face. And you say, damn, that's the life I want. This dude could pick up and go whenever he wants and you hate me for that. See, it's because of your bad decision making. Your bad decision making is where and why you are where you are. You, you made bad decisions. No one's to blame for that but you. No one's to blame for that but you is because you didn't have what it takes. Don't tell me about, oh, Tyler's a dog, you got it better than me because I didn't have no father in my life. I was in a foster home. I had it hard. Well, fuck that. Well, fuck you. I seriously fucking doubt it that you could use that as an excuse as to why you're not successful or where you're not where you want to be. I'll tell you the reason why. is because you did not want to suffer. You did not want to experience the pain like the average motherfucker. This is why you're not there. You're afraid. You can't overcome your fear. You succumb to your fear and you succumb to emotions. So when I tell you something out of love that's designed to make you better, what you do? You start George Jack. George Jack. Running off at the damn mouth. The most high gave you an order that you're supposed to follow. You don't follow that order, but you claim to be a person of the most high. You're just lying to yourself. So I'm gonna tell you this, family, in my conclusion. If you want to change, and you can change, you have to do it right now. You have to turn around right now and look in the mirror and say, I'm not going to be this person that I have been in my past. I've chased people away from me, and I blame them. I fucked up my marriage, and I blame them. I've done this, I've done that, I've done that, and I blame everyone else. But I haven't looked at myself And now that window of opportunity is starting to change And damn, I'm getting afraid In my life I don't have much time left But I want a better life So you gotta make a change now You gotta go Undergo the struggle now You gotta face the pain that you're messed up And then you look at it And you change it You just simply change it You don't blame me You don't blame Taz Adopt You don't blame others you look at it, if your life's fucked up, and you fix the motherfucker. Because if you're pointing the finger at me, then you got damn better sure, make sure that your damn hand is clean, because you got three pointing right back at you. So you fix it. Your problem is not the so-called white man. Your problem is not the so-called black man. Your problem is not man. Your problem is not your spouse, your wife. Your problem is you. You change yourself. And you will change. I'm telling you right now, man. You can change your life. You can be whatever you want to be. It's all in you. The creator instilled it in you. He just sent me to help you bring it out. Because you don't know how to bring it out. Why? Because of pride. You're too damn proud. 
learn to listen. Book of James 1 and 19 say be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. So why are you so mad? <laughs> the creator has a funny way of doing things. So I'm your gift. Receive your gift. But if you want your gift, you got to go through all of the rebuke and reproof that I have for you. Because if you don't unwrap the rebuke, the reproof, the correction, you can't get to the gift. So in order to get to your prize, you have to first get through the wrapping of that gift. And so, do you want your gift? Receive the gift. This rebuke, this reproof is your gift. I'm tired to doubt. And this is my view of you and my reality. Receive your gift. Do it now. This is not motivation. This is teaching you to be driven. This is teaching you to look at yourself and correct yourself, to fix yourself and stop making excuses. The window of opportunity is closing. Don't be the man, don't be the woman that turns around and you look in the mirror and you're crying, you shedding damn tears because you had greatness in you but you did not want to endure the struggle. You did not want to suffer. You did not want to endure the pain to make your, your marriage last. You ran off. You tried someone else and it was worse. Because why? You backed away from struggle. You backed away from the difficulties. And so you took the path of the lesser resistance and you got a lesser prize because you wasn't worthy of your gift. Tazadak, and with that, I'm gonna say shalom, shalom.